We're now going to take another look in the Creative Eye Media Toolkit for our Online 4 and we're going to look at preparing assets and technical skills. So, this is a template. Remember, you must choose your own software and you must make your own templates. So there's nothing wrong with creating a template like this on a Word document or you could just do screenshots and annotation on PowerPoint but the choice must be yours. And obviously, the heading titles have got to be your wording. The work's got to be yours. It's got to be individual. So if we look at the mark bands, few assets are prepared, some assets are prepared, and all assets are prepared. So if I just go back, each example should show the graphic before, what you've done to upscale it, and afterwards. And I'm going to show you an example now on Photo P of how you can do this yourself. So I've done a basic search on Google Images and I've just typed in fitness and I'm going to find a fitness picture to use. I'll use the first one on the list, which is this one here. Now, remember, any assets you take, you need to put in your assets table. And if you look at our other video on assets tables, it tells you all about assets tables and everything you need to do. So if I want to take this picture, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go save image as. And I have a folder called assets. And I'm going to call this one before. As you're going to see why in a minute. So it looks like some stretching or yoga. So I'm just going to call it image number one, yoga. Now you might ask, why am I calling it image number one? Well, we're going to have this before image and after image and I'm going to show you how to cross reference it and keep all of your image organized. So if I save that, what I need to do now is I need to go into the assets folder and I'm going to go to the before images and I'm going to right click. So if I right click on an image and go to properties, I can then, I know it's a JPEG which I can add into the assets table and on details, I know that the DPI is 96. However, I want this to be 300 to be compatible with the 300 DPI poster I'm creating. Now as evidence of what the image looks like, you can screenshot this box and a little trick you'll love is if I hold the Alt key, the ALT Alt key down and I press the print screen button. If I then went to, for example, a PowerPoint and I right clicked and pasted it, it pastes just the box by itself. Look at that, isn't that good? However, I'm not going to go through the process of filling it in on a Word document. I'm going to give you a general idea before we start. In fact, let's put it on a new PowerPoint slide. And we'll do this one on PowerPoint, just something different. So I'll cut this across, I'll paste it on here, and this is preparing my first asset. So I might call this Preparing asset, and I'll spell preparing correctly. That will be a good starting point. I'm going to put number one, yoga. So what I need to do is I need to upscale this and prepare it so it's 300 DPI when I start my poster. So I now have to go back to the internet and I find photo P. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the image and I'm going to drag it into my package. It doesn't have to be photo P, it can be whatever graphics package you use. So now I've got this image in there, I'm going to go to image and image size. And at the moment the DPI is 72, so I'm going to change that to 300. There we go. Now what I might do at this point is I might screenshot this. Because if I go back to PowerPoint and go to Insert, Screenshot, Screen Clipping, I can screenshot that like that. And I have my piece of evidence number two. So technically, I don't really need this box afterwards because I've got the evidence there. However, I'm going to put it in and go whistles and bells and make this all wonderful. So once I've done that, it's 300 DPI. I click OK. And then I go to File, Export as a JPEG, because I'm going to keep it as a JPEG. 
So once I've exported this, it's called number one yoga. I might change this to 300 DPI. So it's a good naming convention. And I'm going to save this. Now I need to obviously make sure I save it into the correct folder. This defaults to go into downloads, but I can change in the settings where it's saved to. But I'm going to move this into the correct folder, which is the after folder. So I'm going to click save. And I'm going to move this across now into the after folder. So if we now go to the folders, the before, if I right click and go to properties, is 96 dpi. But the after is 300 dpi. So I've prepared that asset perfectly for my poster. Now if I want a screenshot of this one, I right click and go to properties again. And on this box, see if you can remember what I did. I went to alt and print screen. And I then dropped that in as my third bit of evidence. Now we just flick through the slides. On this one, we're out of presenter view, but it doesn't matter. We can still read through the slides anyway. On this one, it says technical skills are the specialised knowledge and expertise required to perform specific tasks and use specific tools and programmes in real world situations. I'm actually going to blow that up because it's a mouthful. So, Specialised knowledge and expertise. Do you have the knowledge and expertise to choose how to upscale a picture? Have you proved that you've performed this specific task? So if I break away from this PowerPoint now, so I'm back on the PowerPoint slide I've created and I have my before screenshot, my during, my after. Here we have, I have upscaled the image from 96 dpi to 300 dpi. I have done this because the poster, spell that correctly, the poster started as print quality at 300 dpi. Therefore, all imported assets must be 300 dpi or the poster will lose quality. That's my explanation. That's in my words, that's my work. But obviously, if you did this yourself, you'd have to explain what you've done, why you've done it. I don't expect you to copy and paste this because that would be plagiarism. You'd have to write something similar to that if you think that's what upscaling is all about in your own words. So we'll jump back now into PowerPoint mode and we'll just work our way through the last part. So the important thing is, can you justify your decisions? Because for the top mic band on the second part, it says use of technical skills to prepare the assets is effective. So is it right or appropriate? Is making that S asset 300 DPI appropriate? Is it the right decision? So that is what you're looking at doing. And you should prepare, because it does say for the top mark band, all of your assets correctly. Now, preparation of assets isn't just upscaling the DPI. There is some crossover into tools and technical skills, which you're going to see in the next video. So, for example, if you prepare an asset by cutting the background off, is it prepared correctly um, in a way that looks appropriate for the poster? But on this mark band, it does say technical skills. So we're sticking to the technical elements of DPI. So if we take a sneaky look on the knowledge organizer, if you look at the top right on the back page, there's a little reminder there about before, after and upscaling graphics to 300 DPI. So I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial and you've learned all about upscaling graphics and technical preparation. There is a bit of crossover in tools and techniques. Um, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.